Gentleman from Maryland, Mr. Raskin, is recognized for five minutes. Madam Chair, I want to thank you for calling this important hearing and for the excellent way in which you're conducting it. Um, you know, climate change is a civilizational emergency bearing down on us. We're seeing record forest fires uh, throughout the western part of the United States consuming millions of acres of forest. We're seeing record drought throughout the Midwest, record flooding uh, on the East Coast, uh, hurricanes of record velocity smashing up against the southern coast and the east coast of the country. Uh, we had an, a warning yesterday from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change that we are not remotely doing enough. This is an emergency that we are in. We need all hands on deck and instead we get the, a bunch of silly propaganda lectures about Hunter Biden. Um, the climate benefits of electrifying the postal fleet are significant. The Postal Service's 216,000 delivery vehicles burn about 200 million gallons of gasoline each year, pumping up the demand for gasoline and the price of gasoline. A gallon of gasoline, which weighs roughly 6.3 pounds produces 20 pounds of carbon dioxide equivalent greenhouse gases, which will then linger in the Earth's atmosphere and continue to heat and boil the planet for centuries. Altogether, the Postal Service's gas guzzling fleet emits billions of pounds of carbon dioxide equivalent greenhouse gases every year. Mr. Britton, um, tell us about what some of the concrete climate benefits are that we will see if the Postal Service does the logical thing now and electrifies its entire fleet. Well, you bring up a good point, which is that each and every year, and I think it was Atlas Public Policy that estimated that there's 12 megatons of carbon savings that would be reduced every year. And just for a comparison, we actually put a fair market um, price on that as the federal government through the tax credit 45Q, which is um, made available to coal companies, gas processors, fertilizer plants, steam methane reformers to reduce the emission from those smokestacks. If we allow, just as a comparison, the same level of emissions reduction to be reimbursed through the 45Q tax credit, we would be cutting a $6 billion check to the Postal Service for the emissions reduction of electrification. Hmm. Uh, well, Ms. Stevens, is fleet electrification now a goal of the Postal Service? I would say that the Postal Service is focused on our core mission and on the strategies that we've outlined within our Del Delivering for America plan. The NGDV is a part of that plan, but it is only one piece of the plan. We have many other competing priorities. Well, right. We want to get the mail delivered to our people. We want to do it six days a week. And we want to, you know, I, I don't want to have constituents calling me because uh, the mail is being delivered to the wrong place and all of that. But uh, within the category of this judgment, uh, would the Postal Service's preference be to have 100% fleet electrification if the funding were available? If the funding was made available to us, we would absolutely adjust our plans. Our plans today reflect what we can afford within our own resources. Great. Well, look, uh, I think we all share that as a common goal then. Um, I, you know, there may be a handful of people left, unfortunately, who are still denying the reality of climate change. There may be some people who are so much in the thrall of the oil and gas industry that they can't admit that the survival of our species is in peril because of the dramatic consequences of climate change all over the world with uh, the glaciers vanishing and the ocean levels rising and the polar bears drowning because they're good swimmers, but they're not inexhaustible. Uh, we're seeing dramatic evidence of the way that uh, the climate of the earth is changing. And some people just wanna uh, you know, stick their head under the sand. Uh, and it's the wrong way to approach uh, a catastrophe of this proportion. So um, this is a small step. We don't want to overstate it, but it's a very significant one. And symbolically, it's incredibly important. And it will make a real difference in terms of reducing the amount of greenhouse gas emissions that we're pumping uh, into our own ecosystem. So I think at this point, Madam Chair, we've got the people who, the vast majority of the people who accept the reality of climate change and the imperative of acting 
to address it in those people uh, who want to go back to rhetoric that's now aging 10, 15, 20 years ago. Uh, I yield back to you and thank you for this important The hearing. gentleman yields back. The gentleman from Arizona, Mr. Biggs, is now recognized. Th thank you, Madam.